Greetings, dear listeners. My name is Shirikbaev Saram, and today our broadcast dedicated to David Ricardo. David Ricardo was a British political economist, one of the most influential of the classical economists, along with Thomas Malthus, Adam Smith, and James Mill. He was also a politician and a member of the Parliament of Great Britain and Ireland. David Ricardo's Economic Theories Comparative Advantage Among the notable ideas that Ricardo introduced in Principles of Political Economy and Taxation was the theory of comparative advantage, which argued that countries can benefit from international trade by specializing in the production of goods for which they have a relatively lower opportunity cost in production, even if they do not have an absolute advantage in the production of any particular Good. For example, a mutual trade benefit would be realized between China and the United Kingdom from China specializing in the production of porcelain and tea and the United Kingdom concentrating on machine parts. Ricardo is prominently associated with the net benefits of free trade and the detriment of protectionist policies. Ricardo's theory of comparative advantage produced offshoots and critiques that are discussed to this day. Labor theory of value Another of Ricardo's best-known contributions to economics was the labor theory of value. The labor theory of value states that the value of good could be measured by the labor that it took to produce it. The theory states that the cost should not be based on the compensation paid for the labor, but on the total cost of production. One example of this theory is that if a table takes two hours to make and a chair takes one hour to make, one table is worth two chairs, regardless of how much per hour the makers of the tables and chairs were paid. The labor theory of value would later become one of the foundations of Marxism. Theory of Rents Ricardo was the first economist to discuss the idea of rents or benefits that occur to the owners of assets solely due to their ownership rather than their contribution to any actual productive activity. In its original application, agricultural economics, the theory of rents shows that the benefits of a rise in grain prices will tend to occur to the owners of agricultural lands in the form of rents paid by tenant farmers. Ricardo's idea was later also applied to political economics in the idea of rent seeking, where the owners of assets that benefit from public policies that directly increased rents towards them have and act on and insensitive to influence 
public policy. Ricardian equivalence. In public finance, Ricardo wrote that whenever a government chooses to finance its expenditures through immediate taxation or through borrowing and deficit spending, the results for the economy will be equivalent. If taxpayers are rational, then they will account for any expended increase in future taxation to finance current deficits by saving an amount equivalent to, to current deficit spending. So, the net change to total spending will be zero. So, if a government engages in deficit spending to boost the economy, then private spending will just fall by an equivalent amount as people save more. And the net effect on the aggregate economy will be a wash. Banking Adam Smith argued that free commercial banking such as the banking system in Scotland which had no central bank when Wealth of Nation was written in 1776 was favorable to economic growth. Writing just a few decades later, Ricardo argued for a central bank, a course that was taken up by his students, including John Stuart Mill, who was known to favor the laissez-faire policies in every place but banking. Ricardo wrote the plan for the establishment of a national bank in 1824, arguing for the autonomy of the central bank as the issuer of money. Ricardo proposed that a ratio of gold and treasury bills and a fixed claim asset against the government would secure the central bank's liquidity. The public or the government on behalf of the public is in debt to the bank in a sum of money larger than the whole amount of banknotes in circulation. For the government not only owes the bank 50 million its original capital, which is lent, which is lent at a 3% interest, but also many more millions which are advanced on exquire ex ex bills, on half poor and pension amenities, and on other securities. It is evident, therefore, that if government itself were to be the sole issuer of paper money instead of borrowing it of the bank, the only difference would be with respect to the interest. The bank would no longer receive interest and the government would no longer per pay it. But all other classes in community would be exactly in the same position in which they now stand. And now our broadcast is over. Please subscribe to this channel. That was your host, Sir Goodbye.